what one of the stats, you know, one of the stats that came out of here, and I know we're, and this is a good, I like this, this because we're, we're going here and there, right, because it was, yep. it was uh, going back to referees, one of the stats that I found very, uh, I'm not saying that unbelievable it was uh, why why referees get out of uh, out of hockey, and I, and what I did when and they had some great great backup information, but I thought that if you if, if that had been divided into the younger younger age groups where they're first starting, how many kids start off as a referee? Let's say as a whatever age you have to be, I, I believe you have to be a minimum of age eight. No, it's fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, yeah, right. My kids started at eleven. Yeah, and I, fourteen. And, and I think maybe when you. By the time you hit midget, you you've heard all all that you you're ever going to hear. But when you're starting off and you hear all this kind of yelling and screaming in the fans, I believe we lose a lot of younger younger referees as averse to the uh, yeah, the, the higher yeah. I think that five percent was was right on for the guy that's been refereeing for fifteen or twenty years. That you might lose. Uh, I don't even think you would lose, it would even be five percent. Yeah. But I think for the younger kids. Uh, and, and and I was we were discussing with uh, and and just to give you an idea like uh, Bob Belrose our, our president he, we were talking on Sunday and and, and uh, we had four uh, we had Bruce Vinecore and, and uh, Linda Ross and that was our representation and everybody did come away from that summit so positive and we're already uh, like looking to make changes to incorporate what we were taught. Even within your own organization. Yeah, right? and one of the things we, we looked at was uh, little things. We always help uh, kids out, right? Like if a kid needs a hockey equipment or something. What have we ever done for refs? I mean, when the kid signs up for a referee, what does it cost for a jersey? What if he only gets two games a, a year? Yeah, he's got a big expense here, you know? What I happens? Tell you, it's a factor. Yeah. Because all three of my boys did it. And the interesting thing, I used to look sometimes I'm like, oh my God, you, you got to pay this much for the, for the certification program, you got to buy a sweater. How many games are you getting? Yeah. And then when you when you're trying to recruit a lot of people in, you don't get many games. And, and one of the things I noticed as a as a, a parent, because my kids stopped playing hockey at, at the end of puberty. Uh, as soon as they got into high school, they stopped and devoted full time to refereeing. They weren't getting enough games because you had to give enough games to a lot of the the other people, with the fringe people who were playing hockey and just doing this part time. So if you really wanted to develop your referees, your referees were your referees, not your referee players, or your player referees. And yeah, stay the right. And they Two and classes. The full time referees, and, and you saw it at your tournament. You, the, the Renegades tournament was one of the interesting tournaments, last tournament of the year. That's when you really saw the team of referees come together. Oh. They, they were like they had a barbecue, I think, yes. on, on Saturday night. It was right like, in the dressing room. Yeah. <laughs> That's not good. Both the city of yes, it is. It is. <laughs> and they were a team. And, and, I, and, I can, and I'll never forget when all three of my kids got to the same level where they were all capable of refereeing AAA mission. Well, what happened was the referee in chief would make one phone call. He didn't care to talk to me. He'd say, I need a ref and a linesman uh, Friday night at 8 o'clock. They would be right there. I need two. I need two of you. For, uh, you guys decide who's going to ref. And it was like, you know, if, if you if they knew that they needed two, and maybe one of them couldn't make it, well, the third one could take the spot. And they were all that that quality. And I thought, you know, why don't if you had a team approach like that, where uh, the referee and chief could say, okay, we have a Friday night game. Um, okay, there's four of you. I need, I need three of you. You guys decide who's available because you're all at that level. But we, we very seldom get to that point because we've got so many games to fill where you need the experienced referees that you can't put two of them on and have one lining that could be doing the referee. You've got to put them somewhere else. And a lot of associations can't afford to lose their, uh, their, level, their, their higher level guys for the older age groups because if you lose them, you're... You know, you, now you're bringing guys in yeah. from out of town and it becomes a higher expense to the uh, to your association or it's got to filter, filter down yeah. somehow. We don't, you know, referees aren't volunteers. No, they're not. No, they're, they're, they're and, and that's the that's other thing. Like, like, coaches are volunteers. Trainer, like, when we take a look at volunteers, sometimes people think, okay, those are the people that help out at the tournaments. Those are the people that do the fundraising. But no, your volunteers are your coach. And basically, anyone who's not getting paid is a volunteer. Not in some associations, nope. unfortunately. And that's, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a is very, that spreading? That is spreading, my friend. And is that, that is, because they have to? Well, I'm, I'm going to take the Junior Canadians. My friend uh, uh, Carl France and kid I coached 
played with the Junior Canadians minor midget, left oh, Sudbury, here? yeah, no, left Sudbury, went down to the Toronto, all oh, the yeah. Junior Canadians, mm -hmm. right. you know, where McFarland played his uh, hockey yes. out of a lot of successful guys have gone on to, you know, play professional hockey out of that, one of the Toronto Marlies, and mm -hmm. one of those big, it was one of those big clubs down there. They, and I know the coach, because my son played spring hockey for that coach, Tyler, uh, for the East Coast uh, Selects program out of the U.S., and Tyler coached that team in the spring, and I had a chat with him, and I, he was being paid, well paid, right. to coach that minor midget program. And that is written right into the budget line for the parents. These fees are going as a coach to bet. They're club teams, aren't they? They're club teams. Yes. Yeah, they're club yeah. teams. So it was the Marlies, and the same thing. Because in the, uh, wasn't it a few years ago in the Metropolitan Hockey, or, or they put a limit on how many club teams you could have? Wasn't there something? Like John, John Gardner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I can remember uh, reading stories where it was cheaper for, their, for, let's say, your son to play in this organization. You get more, more, uh, more games, more ice time with it. Exactly. As a first to play, it was, it was, a, it was a cost factor. And, they, and these clubs have a bot. They, they're making a bottom line every year. They're not doing Tyler play. also is running Canlan private rank. Where are the Junior Canadians ice a team out of? Canland. Ice is not an issue. And that, that, that's why you have all these, uh, they're recruiting, I guess, these kids from Adam for the whole system, right? They're, they're going out to the house leagues, you better looking at the good kids. And the five import rule for them, they can grab kids from anywhere. Yeah, yeah five, up to five, outside of the G. Yeah. So, so that's where you're getting into your private and semi-private operations. And, and that's where people are going to put their kids, if, if they're looking at it as an investment. It's like there was a lot of talk about uh, free movement, and there's a lot of pros and cons in that. You know, the little towns will always speak up, but I, uh, and you know what, I, 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 I really respected Scott Smith the way he handled every objection that came up because he wasn't, he wasn't saying we have to do it. But this is stuff. This is something that could happen down the road. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. Uh, the, the memberships, I think, will decide. Hockey Canada is the big picture. It's the big governance. It's a bigger box. Yeah. And what you do within that box associations and member partners is up to you, is what yeah. he said. I mean, you know, if you really listen to it, I mean, you know, that's what he said. You can be more restrictive but not less. Exactly. So they they have to be careful with the, the parameters are they set. But, yeah, this but is the, standard. the free movement is, is one of those things that would have an impact on volunteers too because if 75% of the time is family involvement, you're going to get some. You're going to get some organizations that are trying to attract the volunteers for the, uh, the amount of money they bring with them, not necessarily for the players that you want. That's that's one of the flaws. But again, it, it would be such a minority. You know, I, I let, let's say you had a, uh, let's say uh, let's say you live in a small community, okay, and you're not too far from the bigger center, and all of a sudden you win the lottery, and you, you know you just wanted to say, oh, geez, I want to get the best. That could be the best novice, could be the best house. It doesn't matter what. Yeah. I want to get the best kids. Yeah. We're yeah. going to charge them. That's what we're going to go to. We'll build, we'll build it. You'll, you'll get them. You'll get, you'll get them from all over. Yeah. But I think that that would it might happen once in a million times. You, you know what I mean? And like maybe not so. But it might I, more down so. But I take the Hearst to Lands, who've been a very successful program, right? Um, who've you know basically been able to compete for the tournament champions. But they play. They don't even play in the province. They play in uh, Quebec. But they can yet come back and challenge for. You know, they, they can challenge for a provincial championship, yeah. which I always thought was odd. But you know what? They built a very good program of attracting kids from the north and, and, and abroad into that into that hockey program. So it can't happen in smaller yeah. centers. But I but I think the, the uh, free movement would 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 be more. Uh, I don't think it would really affect the house league as much as I, I think. It's basically it's the rep the rep uh, segment of the hockey would rather see. Open open boundaries. As a I, I agree. I yeah. agree with it. I've been involved in in amalgamation. Yeah, and you're right. It's 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 rep and and, and I think that's where yeah you know, like the, the smaller centers like Matisse. I heard yeah. lady, you know talk to me about it. Well, that you know that we're losing two players. And, you know, I know you're losing two players, and, and you know you may have to talk with you know yes Hurst how you know to keep this program or to maybe you know what get something back you know maybe at the house league level to keep your membership strong but see people get so focused on the player right? yes yeah you know, it's an asset you know, players aren't assets i'm sorry no <laughs> they're breathing breathing entities and you know what they should have a right to go and, and be with their friends if, if that be the case and, and play the game and stay in the game isn't that funny though that the mentality of, of hockey over the years has gone from offense to defense and most of the most of the comments about the free movement were, we're going to lose players. And Scott kept trying to bring it back to, no, you might gain Game players. players. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we think defense. I mean, even when, you, when we talked about player development and, and 
you know, the question about systems versus creativity. No, we have to prevent goals from being smart. And I always said that. We, we have trained coaches so well now that, any, that, that a good quality coach can take a mediocre team and make them competitive in any league. I, I can remember years ago, I was in the Sioux, uh, I got slowed in, so they had their... Uh, one many times? Yeah, one of their... Uh, <laughs> Thursday night, it was uh, their big Steel City tournament. So anyways, I, I happened to meet uh, Larry Keenan, who's from North Bay up there, eh? and he was coaching an Adam team. Eh? I didn't know Larry, but I knew him from coaching, but I, he was in the NHL, eh? and, and we were, I guess his game wasn't on yet, so we, we happened to be uh, discussed, we were watching the game, and he was telling me, and I, I, I never forgot, he says, he says you would, the, the, the teaching of the skills back then was a lost art. He says, how many times you see, uh, and we, even today, if you see a forward go one and one on a defenseman, how many times does he beat that defenseman? It's not because the defenseman is, is, is doing everything right. Mm -hmm. the, the forward doesn't know what to do with the puck when he goes one and one. It's a, it's a skill, and he, he told me that 30 years ago. And you know what, for the most part, I'll bet you that's still the same today. I, you watch a lot you of pass one and one. You dump it. They don't know what to do with it when they get to a one and one. And are, we, are we not teaching that enough? Or? No. Uh, we, we have got uh, 30 minutes left in this particular segment, and, and I don't want to miss the officiating one. But what came out of the summit that was surprising or, or striking or, or that we have to do with the officials, or were there any surprises? It seems like it is a, a, you want to get any hockey people talking, you just talk to them about officials. Compensation. Compensation, yeah. Yeah, that one stuck with me. Yeah. Okay. Pay, them, pay them enough to keep them in the game. Yeah, and the, two, and, and the two man system shared. Yeah, that one, those two stuck with me. I thought the two man system was a great idea. Yeah. And, and But in order to do that, we, we'd have to, uh, at the younger level, I don't know how young you'd start that, but, but there has to be, and it did come up where you have to have both referees. There can't be a senior and a junior guy here. If a guy sees a penalty, he's got to call it. It doesn't matter where he is on the ice, and it's it's not like you wait for the other guy to put his arm up. I think I, and, and I, 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 I would always take the debate back to going back to the single referee because I believe in game management, and I believe that, that as much as people say they, they referees shouldn't determine a game. That when I was coaching, when I was my kids were growing up, the referee was an important factor in the game. And and that style of referee was consistent. It, it wasn't consistent from referee to referee, but it was consistent from game to game yeah. for the individual yeah. referees. Yeah. They and had their own style. They had their own style just like the coaches and had you, their own and style. And you adapt to it. Yeah. And that's how well, it's the same own thing. Empire has his own style, yeah. you adapt to it. And and one of the things I I, I guess I, I would agree with Mike Fulino saying that the game is so fast now at the NHL level that you need two referees. I'm not sure if it's that fast at the junior A level, the major junior A level, that you need to go two referees. But they went to two referees, and I think that they've stopped the development of a lot of younger referees. Marty refereed in the OHL, and I watched the game. I, I hated going to watch them do a game when there were two referees. You never had to skate. It was skate to the red line, back up, skate. And he was never in control of the game. And the average fan wouldn't, wouldn't that, never no. notice that, eh? But when you watch, when he did one by himself, it was, it was fun to watch. Because when you're by yourself, you can miss calls that you don't want to call. And you've got the ability to say, I didn't see it. When you have two referees, it's hard for both of them to say they didn't see it. And, and, and what happens is you lose that game management because sometimes the best call is a non-call. And when you get two people, it becomes really difficult. So, so yeah, we, we've got to develop the referees. I don't know how we do that at the younger levels. I don't think, you, I, I don't think they're necessary in the younger levels no. because the amount of penalties that are called. And, and you know what? You hit, you hit the nail right on the head. I, I, I see it in, uh, if you watch a, like a novice game or a house league Adam, you see kids out there and you know what? If that was Bantam or they would get a penalty, but most of the time it's an accident. You know, it, yeah. it, it's an accident. And you're right, the referee will not call it because he knows what, yeah. if he calls that, he has to administer a five minute or, or whatever. So, so he, he will not call it. And, and the, other thing I, I, the other thing that I have noticed is I don't see as much, as much uh, berating the referees as, as what there was 20, 20 or 25 years ago from the coaches. And I'm t I can only talk house league level here at the, at the younger age groups. You're not seeing those really intense guys here that, uh, you know, you got an eight-year-old eight kid in the bench and the 10-year-old. 
Because you know what? The parents won't stand for that. Yeah, well, speak out harassment. I yeah. think helps that. Yeah. yeah, it's curved. Yeah. It's curved that it has. Sure. You're, you're yeah. always going to get one or two, but you know what? If you're there and, you, and they're not really bad, they're not really bad. You have to let them have their say, but they have, but they're, but they also have to know how to talk to a referee. And I, and I, I think any referee will allow any anybody to talk to a player or a coach if it's done properly. Yeah, with respect. Yeah, with respect. But, but, you know, back to your point about the refereeing, and uh, Dan was sitting at my table quite a bit uh, in the court, so yeah. great guy. I mean, I, you know. Yeah, he's old school. He's old school. And, yeah, he said, you know what? Complain about refs being out of shape, you know, not being able to stay up with the game. Well, they're not skating. Yeah, when you go to a two-man system. Yeah. They're not moving. They and so, you, so, you know, you can, there's that part of it is, you know, the, you know, the inactivity of referee. And, and you're right. And if I was a refereeing at the higher level, I... I want to put my stamp on something. I'm not a big fan of the two-man system. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I've played in it and without it because we've we've had both, and, and I and I and I respect uh, the referees. The fact that you know what they're in the game, uh, you know, and, and you know obviously when you don't notice them, you know they're you know they're doing a great job. They are, and, and I like communicating with one versus two. Yes. As, as a coach on the bench, uh, as a staff, and because we've had you know had these conversations with myself, mocks and dunks over the years yes. on the bed. And, you know, we, we just find that the ref's more into the game. You know what his style is, and your players have to adapt to that style. And that's what we talk about. Yeah, you have, to, you have to look at both sides. You have yeah. to look at the... But that's a, that's uh, a controversial side. Yeah, it was, I mean, I, I like the debate on it. Yeah. We could debate that all day. Yeah, oh, it's... it's yeah. And, and, and there is an intimidation factor. And it's not just an it's a bullying factor. It's a bullying factor at the younger levels when you've got a senior and junior referee, and, and I know it. I've heard it. Right? I've, I've heard it because my son went through it. And unfortunately, it never gets back to the people who are, you know, the ball. It, it really doesn't. No. It's so don't, so don't, you stops ever, don't you ever make a yeah. call in my end again? Yeah. You know, in my senior, <laughs> yeah. don't you ever make me yeah. look bad? Didn't Didn't that come out at the? Uh, didn't somebody speak on that about going to school and uh, you know they're maybe in the same class? Which I don't know how that could happen yeah, if you're yeah. if you're repping uh, the same age group that you are. Yeah. Well, there, there's definitely an intimidation factor around those guys. I, I think the other thing that happens though is that we we are so much trying to get kids that are playing hockey to become referees that, that I think we forget the fact that that some of the best players would make terrible referees. And, and yet we're trying to... And coaches, them. too. And coaches. And, you know, Wayne Gretzky's not the best coach in the world. Uh, but, but what happens is we get people in the game who are there because they were kind of pushed into it by the parents, saying, well, let's go to a referee. You know, you can make some money. Okay, I'll, I'll go. I can sit down for a, a level one clinic. And I forgot my skates, but it doesn't matter because I don't have to go on the ice. I can still get my level one. And, and, and we got a lot of referees that don't belong there. And... And, and when you look at the dropout rate over the first couple of years, that's no different than any career. No, you're right. Hey, you know, the people who are not in the right career of teaching, the dropout rate in teaching, first five years of teaching is huge. Maybe we, got, maybe we have to come up, uh, maybe we should come up with a national program that's so, so when, you're, uh, when your son's old enough to watch hockey nets, and he'll come up and say, hey, Dad, I'd like to be a referee instead of playing the game, right? How many guys are referees? <laughs> you never, you never hear kids I, have I, money I would love referee. to see the team aspect of it. Mm -hmm. It seemed to come out a little bit. I, you know, if you can make the referees a team, so if you've got 40, that's a team of 40 referees, give them jackets. Like, like make them feel proud to be a referee. Yeah, that's... One of my sons, one is the only child, only child. He used to love getting out of the dressing room fast so he could walk into the lobby and talk. He would talk to the parents. And, and because I haven't met a parent or a coach who didn't like to say they knew a referee outside the game. They'll talk to them. Nobody yells at a referee. No. Yeah. You know, yeah. before or after a game. Yeah. They like to talk, they like to yeah. know, they, but during the game, everything changes. But 